Well, we've only got one day left of meteorological summer and we begin meteorological autumn and head closer and closer to winter 2022-23. Thanks for clicking on to today's long range forecast. Um, it's not actually really a forecast, but it's going to be the first discussion of winter 2022-23. So, um, yeah, I want to spend a little bit of time today looking and touching on a couple of aspects that's going to be looked at as we go over the next couple of months. Uh, like I said in yesterday's video, I'm heading on holiday um, as of tomorrow, uh, so I don't know exactly how the videos are going to go. I do have an intention of getting a video done at some point tomorrow, but I'm going to be on the road pretty much all day, driving from uh, about 25 miles north of Inverness all the way down to the south side of London. So quite a journey ahead tomorrow, um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. But the of course, the uh, stratospheric polar vortex, something that's not been mentioned over the last uh, couple of months, of course, as it uh, died um, of death uh, back at the end of spring. It was quite late, actually, in, in dying off last year. Of course, it was super strong during February last year, uh, hence the extremely uh, zonal flow that we had, uh, you know, one storm after another. It was really winter's only wet month, actually, last year. Um, but, uh, you know, once we started to see the, the, the final stratospheric warming take place, we did see some spells of colder conditions uh, late on last winter. But it's really been over the last 12 months or so, the theme has been warmer and drier than normal across the UK as well as across not only Europe, but much of the Northern Hemisphere has seen a very warm period of time. You look at the, um, you look at the, you know, year to date temperature wise across the world, uh, very warm waters over the North Atlantic and North Pacific, uh, very warm conditions over the land masses of the Northern Hemisphere. But of course, cooler waters over the Western Indian Ocean and much of the equatorial Pacific has in turn kept temperatures at bay. A fairly cool Africa, fairly cool much of Australia, India, into Pakistan, very, very wet, but also cool and normal here also. And uh, of course, over uh, the you know, downwind of the, of, of the equatorial um, you know, portion of the Eastern Pacific, uh, where La Nina continues to live on had a cold and normal year. Also interestingly over central North America it's been cool and normal um, so to speak but certainly Europe and Asia very very warm indeed and uh, you know the, Euro the European continent has had an incredibly warm upcoming uh, or past uh, eight months uh, really so very very little in the way of cool and normal uh, across the European continent uh, so far this year. And uh, of course, the, um, the stratospheric polar vortex, um, you know, not really showing up just yet. But if you notice here, we play through this GFS. Look, this is uh, the 10 uh, millibar temperature profile here within the Arctic region. And as I play right the way through here, so this takes out the middle portion of September, you start to notice here over top of the pole, we're starting to lose those uh, kind of reddy colors which means that we're starting to see cooling within the stratosphere and towards the middle portion of the month we are going to start to see the return of the polar vortex here and of course along with that uh, we will start to see snow increasing over uh, over the high latitudes as well so this is of course the GFS uh, Asia chart for snowfall and of course over the higher grounds uh, of China and into the Himalayas we are seeing snow starting to uh, increase also northern and eastern portions of Siberia uh, starting to see snow even across parts of Scandinavia we're starting to see snow showing up here uh, through the first half of September looking at North America same story here uh, nothing at the moment but uh, of course uh, you can start to see the snowfall uh, starting to increase across the northern so it's basically the high latitudes of the world we're starting to see winter coming back and of course winter generally starts during the month of september within the high latitude region and uh, it will go downhill as we go 
uh, forward here overall. So uh, the stratospheric pool of vortex will start to respond, start to return as we start to increase snowfall across the high latitude region. And of course, very, very warm water um, that, that has really driven uh, these warm temperatures all the way through since, uh, what, uh, autumn and even extend back to last last summer through the autumn had a very very warm september probably was a little bit of a telltale sign as to where we're going for the winter season didn't really truly want to believe it i suppose but nonetheless we had a warm winter after a very very warm september and of course if you watch gavin partridge he did allude to this way back last autumn that typically when you have very warm Septembers, warm Central England temperature, or CET, you typically have a warm winter that follows. And that, uh, basically, history uh, proves that, um, you know, it, it holds the key in terms of what the future may hold. And that should have been a big telltale sign. That being said, however, there was a lot of parameters, there was a lot of things that made me believe, and it made Gavin believe as well, and I'm sure he'll, he'll happily admit that, it sucked us in to believe in the winter was going to be a cold one last year and then for of course it was quite the opposite take uh you know you know the situation that we're in the warmer world that we're in the warmer sea surface temperatures that we have even despite a low solar activity the, uh, the temperature of both ocean and atmosphere continues to rise and of course when you've got that land temperatures will continue to rise as well so some of those key drivers that we used to use back in the you know 80s and 90s and even the, the, the early portion of the 2000s, some of these um, parameters that you look at, whether it be the tripod of the North Atlantic of, of warm, cold, warm, which we're looking at, of course, this year, um, whether you've got that or whether you've got, you know, El Nino, La Nina, the Indian Ocean Dipole, uh, you know, snow cover within uh, Siberia during the month of October. Um, you know, the quasi biennial oscillation very strongly easterly in an easterly phase last year. And again, there was a little bit of a hint there that typically when you've got very strong easterly QBOs or quasi biennial oscillations, which of course are, are the zonal winds uh, blowing either west to east over the equatorial portion of the of the atmosphere when you've got very strong easterly winds that can also have a negative effect on 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 the on cold winters um, across our region of the world here so where are we at I, I do believe that warmer than normal is likely to be the theme as we go into at least the month of september and that may continue on through the autumn mm -hmm and into the early portion of the winter season. We're also seeing an increase in CMEs or coronal mass ejections off the sun. So we're increasing the activity. The sunspots uh, are becoming a little bit more active day by day. And it's of course the release of solar energy from the sun towards the earth that can have an impact on our on our, our weather. I'm going to say climate, but no, um, you know, we're talking about the short term here, uh, so it affects the weather, of course. Going to be looking at all these aspects, we've got a, we're increasingly strong negative Indian Ocean dipole at the moment, so that is a, one thing that will be factored into the equation. We're also going to be looking at the sea surface temperatures now. The, the La Nina is slightly weakening, and it looks as if the concentration of coldest waters will start to congregate over the central portion of the Pacific Ocean. A Madoki style La Nina may be a more positive indicator for colder weather over the European continent here. So we're seeing slight warming in close to northern portions of South America and we're seeing possibly the congregation of coolest waters over the central portion of the Pacific. A couple of concerns that I've got is the warm North Pacific. You typically want to start to see a cooling taking place from Alaska down the west coast of Canada and off uh, California and the Baja region. If we can start to see this cooling, I, will, I would be a little bit happier. But with a very warm 
North Pacific, that sometimes can lead to a more enhanced jet stream uh, exiting North America and crossing the North Atlantic. We've got also very, very warm waters over the North Atlantic. What you want to see for a negative NAO, the AO pattern is warmth and then a, set, a belt of cool right where that warmest waters are and then a belt of warmth down where these cool waters are between the Azores and the Canary Islands here. But I think in terms of autumn season, September through November, I'm keeping a very close eye on these warm waters. Atmosphere naturally starts to cool. We've got, of course, the potential increase of tropical activity. Again, may not have any impact, but if they recurve, head up towards the middle altitudes, interact with the jet stream, that can have a significant downstream effect on our weather here in Western Europe. So the tropics are one aspect. The natural cooling of the atmosphere as we progress through autumn may, while it led to dry, hot conditions during the summer, could also lead to increasingly wet conditions as we push through the autumn season and towards the winter season. But I think the influence of that warm water will lead to warmer than normal temperatures during much of this uh, this autumn season. I think any type of early season cold is likely to be over Scandinavia and eastern portions of Europe, furthest away from that warm, warmer than normal water. That is my hunch, that is my initial thoughts with regards to the autumn and the winter season. Do I think we're going to have a cold winter this year? Well, I thought it was going to be cold last year and it didn't happen. That being said, however, I do think that there is a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration and caution is very much required in terms of going for either a warm winter or indeed a cold winter. You know, the parameters have changed as the climate has been increasingly warming over the last 20 odd years or so. The signals that you typically look for isn't as much of an indicator as the ones were. So we'll need to keep a very close eye on all these aspects as we go forward here. Uh, the solar cycle, I'm going to try and look into that in a little bit more detail as well and share my opinion on that. But uh, yeah, initial thoughts are that we have got some good signals. We've got some bad signals when it comes to the winter season. Overall warmer and possibly increasingly wetter than normal, I think, is where we're going in terms of the autumn season here. Uh, of course, we can get spells of cold even in a nor an overall warmer autumn. We can get spells of warm in an overall cooler than normal autumn. So, you know, pinpoint the details, very difficult to say. Man-Julian oscillation, I think, played a, a key role in the type of summer that we had warm and dry, coupled with the La Nina, coupled with the low solar activity. We, of course, we've seen similar to that back in 2009 to 2011, very dry compared to normal across the UK. Then we've seen a turnaround taking place as the El Nino developed, and I'm watching that possibly in the next spring development of El Nino, and we start to see much wetter conditions return to the British Isles here. But uh, yeah, that's uh, my thoughts for today on this Tuesday. Hope you have a great day, and I'll hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.